morning. Good morning, Minty. Welcome to, I can't get low enough to be level with Minnie. <laughs> Welcome to my first roving re- Oh, Minnie, that's not very nice. You can see how bad her mats are at the moment. Oh, she just sat with her back to us. Um, welcome to, I can probably move it up a bit now. Ooh, turn the face. Welcome to the first reading vlog um, of my new life. <laughs> um, so I'm gonna be filming, hopefully, bye Minnie, <laughs> a reading vlog every week now. Um, these are gonna take place on a Friday and they're gonna follow a sort of formula or a sort of routine, I love a routine or a formula, um, where they're the same sort of structure but with different locations and things like that every month. Now I think the first thing I should be starting with is a cup of tea and it's very sort of cold, not cold, but like autumnal, it's raining loads outside the dream. So I think I'm going to have it in my lovely autumnal mug. So I'll go make myself a cup of tea and then I guess I'll meet you on the sofa for more chat about how this is going to play out, shall we? Yeah. Oh, it's nice to lay down though. That's my naked leg. So hi and welcome proper to the reading vlog. Come on then baby. Come on you baby. Um, yeah, as I said, these are going to be taking place in different sort of locations every week. I'm going to be going about. That's why I've sort of entitled the series The Roving Reader, um, the Roving Reader series. Um, however, as I said, it's absolutely shitting it down outside. <laughs> and I thought maybe it would be nice to have the first one of these. Are you going to settle down, Minnie, or not? To have the first one of these um, just at home. I've got some jobs to do as well as sort of like just reading. Um, I've got to go to the oh yeah, I've got to go to the post office at some point. David's at work with the car, so I'll have to wait till it stops reading to go and do that. But you guys can come along with me for that. I've got some editing to do and some other bits, but obviously reading to do as well. But like I've alluded to, these are going to sort of be quite formulaic, and I'd like to always open each. Um, reading vlog with a cup of tea and the introduction what are you doing baby and the introduction of a question that I'm going to ask and then we're going to answer it together at the end so are you trying to get comfy with me Minnie? why are you out there look it looks lovely out there it feels so this is the first day where I felt properly autumnal I've got socks on I've got a top on over me over me um where are you going over my pyjama top no she's still not comfy 
comfy. You may remember the lit chat questions that I had many years ago. I bought them, they're, they're, they're made by Book Riot. Um, and I bought them many years ago and I used to do a series on my channel where I would talk about, I'd answer one of these questions. And they're really good discussion topics. There's a whole selection of discussion topics. And um, I thought what I'd do is I'd shuffle this whole pack, although my shuffling skills leave a lot to be desired. Oh yeah, they really do. Yeah. <laughs> Especially, it's hard enough with, um, with a pack of cards, let alone with this. So I thought I'd shuffle them and I thought at the beginning of each one of these vlogs, I would answer, I'd ask one of the questions and then at the end, we can answer it together. And if I've got people with me, so for example, I mean, today David's at work, but David might be here, or I might be out and about with other people. I think next week I'm gonna be out and about with other people. I can ask that question at the top of the blog, and then we can answer it. And you guys can answer it in the comments if you'd like to. This isn't my bestest shuffling job, but we'll go with it. Also, I've got a feeling that these, um, these videos are probably gonna be quite long, so they might be sort of like settle in ones. Right, okay. So I'm going to shuffle them and then I'm going to put this at the end so that from now on, anyone that we do, because the good thing is, is that there's two questions as well. So there's 50 cards, which has got two questions on. So that's 100 questions. That's gonna get us through like two years worth. So let's start with the first one. And this is speak. And the question is, do you ever listen to audiobooks? Why or why not? That's the first question of the Roving Readers series. Do you ever listen to audiobooks? Why or why not? Hopefully I've put the question up here as well. So we're going to answer that at the end of the day. So those are going back in there. I think you know the answer to my question. But the why, the why is always such an interesting question. So there we go. So that's the, the question sorted. Now I guess I've got to pick a book for the day. So I'm actually almost finished with i'll go and get it because that's what all this this reading vlogs about isn't it baby 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 so i'm almost done with um six Tudor queens catherine howard the tainted queen by alison ware um, i'm filming a reading vlog for this which is why i'm not carrying on with this book today i'm going to start something new and also i'm 50 pages to, to the end so i reckon i'm going to get that finished tomorrow so that's what i'm reading at the moment but i've got a whole host of books here this is when it would be wonderful if i could just wheel my trolley around but alas i can't because it's wedged in by other books but i'll show you my tbr you would have seen my tbr anyway and i'm going to pick a book a brand new book i always feel so excited when i pick a brand new book um and i'm going to start reading that today so i've got two in mind come on over with me now as i said i've got two in mind so the first one is night crawling this one by layla motley now i'm reading this for my um book club with my friends on facebook um and it needs to be read by the first weekend in october so i want <laughs> That I was thinking about starting today, so that's a maybe. But also, The Club by Ellery Lloyd, this one here, which is a thriller. Um, this has got three reservations on, so I'm not going to be able to renew it. So I think it's between these two, and the reason I'm opting maybe more for The Club is because I don't want to read this early doors and forget about it by the 4th of... Oh, it's not the 4th, by the first weekend in October... So I think I'm going to go for the club, but I also need to read this soon because there's reservations on that as well. So I'm not going to be able to renew that. But I think I'm going to go for the club by Ellery Lloyd today. I mean, there's lots of other amazing things on there. I was also tempted by a complicit. Um, maybe, I mean, at some point, I think I'm going to read Paper Girls because David and I want to start watching the series and he's, he's read it. And also True Beers I'm keen on reading. But yeah, today we're going to opt for the club by Ellery Lloyd. I feel quite excited about this choice now. So yeah, The Club by Ellery Lloyd. I can't remember where I heard about this, but I got it out from the library, so I must have been watching like a video or something to hear about this. Um, oh, it's really dark, I need to put my reading light on. There's no place like home. I will put my reading light on, hold on. That's gonna help out a, a little bit, which is very good. There's no place like home. The home group, a collection of ultra exclusive private members club is a global phenomenon and the opening of its most ambitious project yet, Ireland home, a forgotten island transformed into the height of luxury is billed as the celebrity event of the decade. But as the first guests arrive, it turns out that things are far from perfect at home because sometimes it's the most beautiful people who have the ugliest secrets. And in a world where reputation is everything, they do anything to keep them. 
it says here for fans of the white lotus succession which i am a fan of big little lies which i think i've read the club is an exhilarating addictive read telling a story of ambition excess and what happens when people who have everything or nothing to lose are pushed to their limits and it looks as though it's told a little bit multimedia it's definitely told from multiple perspectives which i'm into but when i flicked open i saw that there was like a an article from vanity fair called murder on the island um, so yeah, I think it's going to be a super fun read and something fun to start on a day when all I have planned is reading, well, and a few other little jobs. But yeah, I guess I'll start now. I'm absolutely so hungry, but I need to take, I take tablets for um, acid reflux. I get really bad, like, chest pains, which are caused by acid reflux, and I have to take those 30 to... 30 minutes to an hour before I eat <laughs> which is fine if I'm like getting ready to drive into work or something or like getting on with work but when you wake up it's a bit later than I normally wake up it's like eight o'clock yeah and um when you have to wait <laughs> to eat I do feel hungry so I'm going to take one of those tablets and then I'm going to sit and read as much as the club as I can while my tea's going and then I'll make something for breakfast um but yeah, let's see how I get on with this. It's, it's um, on Reese's Reese Witherspoon's book club, and she's quite renowned, isn't she, for picking up books? Oh, this is um, Ellery Lloyd is a pseudonym for London-based husband and wife writing team Colette Leons and Paul Vlitos. Interesting. So it's I, I always I thought it was um, American. So that's interesting that they're uh, UK based. So let's crack on with it. I feel quite excited about it actually. Let's go. Right, get tablet first, Lowen. bookmark for, that David bought for me for putting my stock in a few years ago it's very autumnal looking and, and it's got a uh, quote from Anne of Green Gables on it it says I love a book that makes me cry I don't think this is going to be a book that makes me cry but I love a autumnal bookmark that's for sure oh god I feel so comfy let's make that there move my book and then I can put my feet up Well, I quite enjoyed that, and I enjoyed my cup of tea. It felt like it, sometimes I feel like in the morning, in order to get my voice working, I have to have a cup of tea, it was lovely. Um, yeah, so I've read 28 pages of this whilst drinking my cup of tea. I very much, I feel invested already. So, um, the club is a, a chain of exclusive, uh, very, very exclusive um, hotels and um, event spaces for like the very top A-listers. There's an endless waiting list of people waiting to get into this um, club, and we've heard so far far from three I told you it's from multiple perspectives and the perspectives we've heard from so far is from three people who work for the club so we're hearing from uh, someone who's just been recruited as head of housekeeping she's applied for jobs to work for the club many many times um, someone who is sort of like the celebrity booker um, and uh, she used to be a journalist um, and actually the person so the the actress that she interviewed just before she decided to sort of like jack in the journalism is someone who is now absolutely gagging to get a membership to the club she sort of like hasn't her career hasn't taken off in the way that maybe she thinks it has and she's just not eligible she's not successful enough she's not desired enough to be a member of the club so you're hearing from the, the celebrity booker who's speaking to her and then we're hearing from the PA of um, the the two brothers who are the, the the CEOs of this company so yeah I love a multiple perspective anyway in a thriller because you're sort of hearing about like different information at different times uh, which I really like and as I said it opened with a um, an article from Vanity Fair which looks as though it's sort of continues throughout the book i've had a little flick through um and that talks about an event that happened which was supposed to be the most exclusive event of the year and um they realized that there's been a murder there's been somebody has has died and yeah i quite like the the setup of this this club um this one is called the island club and it's set on a on an island just um off the coast of essex which is uh, the the county north of me actually so on like the east of england still southeast but east of england um 
and <clears throat> you can only drive to the island at certain times because when the tide's out because then the road gets covered so I quite like that that feels very sort of like Agatha Christie-esque doesn't it I've only been able to get into one place at one time so <clears throat> yeah I feel invested in it already and I'm looking forward to reading a bit more but I think now it's been long enough I would say it's nine o'clock now. It's been long enough for me to now eat something. So I'm going to have some scrambled eggs on Marmite on toast. One slice. So you might have seen from a video recently that my diabetes is back. So I'm trying to be um, a bit more aware of what I'm putting in my body in terms of carbs and sugar. Because they're the sort of things that don't love me. Let's have a look and see what my fasting blood glucose is. Just for all of you diabetes nuts out there it's 7.3 see that is high <laughs> for for someone who's i've had i wonder if me oat milk actually that i haven't although it wouldn't have i've literally only just finished it but i wonder if me oat milk has something to do with that i did have um we went to the theater last night well we went to see at the cinema last night much ado about nothing the national theater production it was absolutely brilliant and um i had a pizza for dinner so if i know like what i'm trying to do is have do you care about this? <laughs> what I'm trying to do is have one carb-free meal a day. Um, and then that means that I can be a bit more... Because I don't want to deny myself anything. Um, so I can have one carb-free meal a day. So today I think that meal is going to be uh, lunch. Because I think I'm going to make some tomato and basil soup. My mum gave me a bag of tomatoes from their garden yesterday. And I've got some tomatoes that are on the turn. So I think I'm going to roast those. I mean, you can, you'll be able to see it. You're here with me the whole day. Um, so I think I'm going to have some tomato soup for lunch. So like when I say carb free, I mean sort of like your classic carbs like potatoes, bread, rice, pastry, all the all the good stuff. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to go make some breakfast now. I've also got quite a nice, David and I are having um, squash and chickpea pasta for dinner tonight. We're going to the cinema tonight as well. We're going to watch See How They Run, which is the new Saoirse Ronan um, film about a murder mystery um, but I think it's quite a bit tongue-in-cheek it looked a bit Wes Anderson I don't know if it is Wes Anderson I mean I can find out but the, the the trailer looked a bit Wes Anderson I think it's called see how they run see how they run no it's nothing to do with Wes Anderson it's set in 1950s London. Plans for a movie version of a smash hit play come to an abrupt halt after a pivotal member of the crew is murdered. When a world-weary inspector and an eager rookie, that's Saoirse Ronan, constable take on the case, they find themselves thrown into a puzzling whodunit within the glamorously sordid world of an underground theatre, investigating the mysterious homicide at their own peril. Oh, it sounds great, doesn't it? It's got a really good cast as well on it. Sam Rockwell and Saoirse Ronan are the, the main draw, but it's also got Adrian Brody, Ruth Wilson, Reese Shearsmith, Harris Dickinson, who I've not heard of, Charlie Cooper, Pippa Bennett Warner, Pearl Chander, Sean Clifford from Fleabag, Jacob Fortune Lloyd, and David Oyelowo. Yeah. So I'm looking forward to, to that tonight, but we, that means we'll be having quite an early dinner. Anyway, I should stop chatting and make my breakfast. I'm going to have another cup of tea, um, read a little bit more. Then I think I might have a bath before I get into some clothes. Still really chucking it down out there. It's actually lovely. Really lovely. This is my time. I like hearing cars drive through rain as well. And this is busy time, actually, because, like people going to work and stuff so there's a lot of cars driving scrambled egg on marmite on toast completed i love marmite it's very sort of divisive isn't it and i love it sometimes i put a teaspoon of it in the scrambled egg so yeah this is how i balance a lot of people say to me how do you read and do other stuff and i think i think i've just adapted guys <laughs> i think i've just adapted so that everything i do I can. I will have to chop up one slice of toast first so that I can just absent-mindedly shovel it in. But yeah. Very ASMR, isn't it? This so far. <laughs> Lots of different sounds of doing stuff. Oh God, I can't wait to do this. Let's go. So it's bath time. Pop 
the old bath mat out. David recently, I just realised I took my t-shirt off underneath because I've just put it in the wash. So I thought I'd better do one button up just for modesty's sake. Um, David recently went to Lush and bought a few bits from the Lush Halloween range. This monster claw, which is falling apart. Oh God. A Lord of Misrule. That's the only thing about keeping them in your bathroom, isn't it? They get damp. The monster claw, Lord of Misrule, this sort of ghosty guy, and then this little mummy that looks so cute. But this I trek myself to. It's a bubble bar. It's the CBD one. I don't know what it's called anymore. Botter, Botanomancy or something. Um, but I use it when I'm on my period. But I don't want to use any of these because David's bought these and that will probably, I should be having those like when David's here so he can get in the bath after me. I always get in the bath first because he tells me that I run the best baths. So I'll have a little bit of this even though I'm not on my period. Um, but that's very good for period pain if anyone's interested. I don't know if it's a placebo effect type thing just because it's got CBD in it but I always feel like I feel a bit better on some, well baths in general make me feel a bit better when I'm on my period but that one in particular yeah if, if it's not called bottom see it's the um pink and green swirly one i'll see if i can link it down below if i remember there's gonna be lots of linking down below if i remember so yeah so i'm gonna have a bath do a bit more reading then get dressed then i don't know whether the post office is open today so today is the 9th of september friday and the queen died yesterday um, and I saw a tweet saying that the Royal Mail, take me, take my socks off, the Royal Mail strike had been cancelled because of that. So I'll go down there. If not, it'd be nice to get out anyway, won't it? Um, the sky is bluing up. There's still a little bit of wet in the air. It's definitely not go down the beach and read weather, which is what I planned for today. But that can come another day. I love being down the beach when it's like a bit blowy anyway. So um, I'll do that on another Friday. So yeah, I guess I'll run the bath. Pop a bit of that in and then read a bit more. Well, that bath was lovely. I'm just trying to decide because it's it's like 17 degrees outside. I'm gonna to go to the post office sooner rather than later because I think it's going to rain a bit later on. So, um, yeah, I need to message, I'll show you that actually. Let me pick what top I'm gonna to wear then I'll show you. So I bought these tops secondhand on Depop. They're from, from uh, Saturday by Megan Ellaby. This has got a checkerboard print with little love hearts on, green and brown, which I never would have thought to go together, but look how good they look together. And then this other one, um, which is different clashing prints. They've also got trousers of this, which are still available from the person I bought this on Depop from. Which to wear? I just thought this would be quite a nice thing to wear. It's like lighter material, but long sleeve. These are going to be amazing under t-shirts and stuff in the winter when it gets a bit colder. Green or brown? Or... Do you know what? I'm going to go for the, the mix up. So let's put that on. And then I've got to go to the post office. Now I've got to post back a Fitbit charge. I haven't actually tried these on yet, so let's hope they fit. It's XXL, so. Yeah, it does fit. Oh, I like it. It's cool, isn't it? Oh, I really like it with the jeans. So I put these jeans on. These are the jeans I went to the cinema in last night. And when I was in the cinema for dinner, I had a pizza and it was dark, so I couldn't see what I was doing. And I literally slopped pizza down myself. So there's a big pizza mark on there, but I'll wash them after tonight. I need to undo this so I can play. Yeah, I really like it. And like I said, these are gonna be great under t-shirts when it gets a bit cooler. I'm wondering, maybe this might be a bit warm for today, but we'll go and sit and have a little read and see what happens. So yeah, I've got to go to the post office. I've got a post back, a Fitbit charger, which I ordered the wrong one. So I've now got the right one, but I needed to order, I love the little pink accents at the bottom of the sleeves. Um, so I need to order the right, oh, I've ordered the right one, so I need to send back the wrong one. And then also for my wedding, and I don't mind showing you this because it's not the finished product. I mean, it's not gonna look good with this hair that I've got at the moment. But, two seconds, let's get it. So for my wedding ceremony, no, not for the wedding ceremony, I'm gonna wear something different. For the wedding party, I've ordered one of these from an independent company based in Whitstable. 
a girl called Emma makes these. It's a sequin flower crown. This isn't the one I'm gonna be wearing. This is just a prototype she sent me to see if I liked the size of it. She does thicker ones, she does thinner ones. What colors I might like, and I tried it on, and I love it, I think it looks great. I mean, they're amazing for festivals, aren't they? But also for Christmas, like, I'm gonna be getting a lot of wear out of it. <laughs> I'm gonna wear it like all through Christmas. And yeah, I think it's nice to own something that you could wear many times that you can say, this is from my wedding day. So I've got to send this one back because this was the prototype. But I don't actually, I said I would post it back this week, um, but I realized I don't actually have a address, so I need to message her to get the address. And hopefully she'll get back to me in time for me going to the post office today so that I can post that back to her. So that's a little trip to the post office. So I'll message her now. I'll, yeah, and then I guess I'll just wait and hopefully she'll get back to me and then I can post that back to her. Yeah, so maybe I'll go and have a little more read. Maybe I'll actually brush my hair and put it up in a bun. Um, really like this top, I think it's so fun. Love it with the jeans and the belt. You can see me in the mirror. Hi! She's got back to me with the address. So it's off to the post office I go. And I'm going to listen to an audiobook on the way there. Do you know what? It actually looks really warm outside. <laughs> I'm going to have to put sunglasses on. Um, so I'm going to listen to an audiobook on the way there, which sort of coincides with, that might give you a hint as to what my answer is to the question. I've forgotten what the actual exact wording was. Do you ever listen to audiobooks? Why or why not? Um, you can hear the washing going. That's what that's there for. I've got some washing to put out. Um, so yeah, I'm going to wander down now. And the audiobook I'm listening to is um, The Miniaturist by Jesse Burton. So the, the, I read this many years ago. And oh, my, my, my uh, battery's flashing red. So I'll fill you in about that later. I'm heading to the post office now. Where's my headphones? Put a bit of lip balm on. It's gonna cut off any minute. I can just feel it. Oh, I think I just swerved the rain, guys. So as I said, I'm listening to the audiobook of um, The Miniaturist by Jessie Burton. So the second book in, well, I don't think it was meant to be a duology when she made it, but I think it was so successful she's made it a duology. Is it called The House of Fortune, maybe? That's out now, it came out in July. And I thought, oh, I would like to read that. Um, but I can't really remember much about The Miniaturist. And actually, listening to it, I feel like I'm remembering a completely different book. I remember it being quite, sort of, melancholy, really. Do I have any garlic powder? I'm, I'm making tomato soup. I do have garlic! I'm making tomato soup, but I'm literally just making it out of what I've got. <laughs> Which is as much soap. My mum and dad have given me some tomatoes from their garden. Big beef steak ones, some plum ones. These are from David's parents' garden, but these are a couple of, maybe last week, they'll be fine. That one looks like it's on its last legs. I'm gonna chop them up and just see, and then these are ones that I got from the supermarket. Then I'm gonna make it, I mean, I'm literally just making it with whatever I've got left over. Oh, I've got a basil plant. Now, the strange thing about this basil plant is that this I got on my Tesco click and collect delivery a couple of weeks ago and they sent me, because they didn't have any of the, the one, the, just the standard one, they sent me the Tesco finest one. Now, it smells like normal basil, but when you eat it, it is so aniseedy. And aniseed isn't one of my favourite flavours, but I hope it will be alright in the soup. And then I think I'm gonna put some balsamic in there as well. I think the balsamic is way out of date. Oh no, it's not. No, it's not, we've got to November. Excuse me, I'm just gonna get some stock in here. The stock cubes are definitely out of date. So I've got these meat-free, oh, excuse me. Meat-free fake beef ones. They went out of date in July, 2022. I mean, stock, is that gonna be out of date? Who knows? So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop up the tomatoes and roast them with some balsamic on them and a bit of garlic. Then I'm going to basically just blend it with a bit of stock and basil and hope for the best. Whilst, I'll oh, put the oven on the room. Whilst listening to a bit more of The Miniaturist. I've got 6 hours and 45 seconds, uh, 45 seconds, 6 hours and 45 minutes left of it. I think I'll crack on with that. Get a, I like to cut my tomatoes with a steak knife. We don't eat steaks in this house. And um, I feel like when you've got like a little bit of serration on the edge, 
very good to get through the old tomatoes. My mum said to check with the plum ones that they don't have black at the bottom. Oh, and there was one I started yesterday, that can go as well. I'm taking out the green bit because not on my watch will anyone ever eat one of those spiky bits of green bits at the top. In fact, it's probably my, like, one of my food terrors that I would ever come across. This is the bit I'm talking about. That bit. Oh, I'd never, that wouldn't happen on my watch, so I'm taking them all out. Anyway, onwards. At the top of the stairs, she creeps along the corridor. Why can't you? So I've stuck the tomatoes in, I put a bit of balsamic over them, and um, some smoked garlic and some olive oil and a bit of smoked salt as well, so it should be quite smoky and nice. Um, and then I'm just gonna leave them. I don't really know how long for. Um, but definitely until I've finished editing this video. So this is a video, so this will already, mm, it won't be up yet, I don't think. Let me look at my schedule. No, okay, so this is a video coming up. Might even be the next video you're gonna be watching. Um, it's David and I talking about films. So we filmed a video, oh, I can link the old one. So there's a podcast that I listen to called Films To Be Buried With, with Brett Goldstein. Um, and he asks, he gets people on from the world of film, well, from the world of all, all over the place, guys, um, and asks them questions about film. Now, David and I did, we took these questions and we answered them earlier on this year. And there's a second part of the podcast he does called The Resurrection, where he gets the guest back on and asks them more films. So this was us, uh, more films, asked us more questions. So this was me and David answering those questions as well. And it's just a really, like... I feel like the title of the video puts people off because they're like, oh, I don't know that podcast, so I won't listen. But it's actually just a really nice chat between me and David talking about films and, and things. And um, yeah, go and give it a watch a bit later on. Like I said, I think it'll be the next video that's coming out. So I'm going to edit that. Um, and then by that point, hopefully, the tomatoes will be done. Then I can make some stock pop some basil in there. I might put the basil in and put it back in. Or maybe I'll just blend it. I think I'll just blend it, actually. Um, and yeah, just hope for the best, really. We'll see. <laughs> should go all right, shouldn't it? But yeah, let's get editing. Oh, wow. Well, as you get lower, it's even... I don't know if I'm going to be able to drink this. Let's see what these tomatoes... <coughs> excuse me. <laughs> I haven't spoken for a while. Let's see what these tomatoes, which are... I've been in the oven for an hour, look like. Steam it. Oh, they look lovely, they're very juicy. Okay, so I put in, oh, this is when I don't know how I'm gonna do this. So I put in there, I'll show you what they look like. Here they are, a couple of caught, but that's fine. So I put in here some garlic, which I obviously wanna squeeze out, but it's gonna to be too hot. Maybe I'll put it over there. Can she manage it? She's a brave girl. There's five, I think. Oh yeah, here's one. <laughs> Can't reach those. Can't do it with one handed either. Hold on. Let's be sensible. Sensible. So I'm gonna get these out, then get the garlic out, then smush that into this mix. What do I do then? Put a bit of put a bit of stock on. Oh no, I think I will need stock, right? Oh yeah, look lovely. Oh my god, that looks amazing. One. Well, they haven't gone quite smushy. God, they smell so... Oh my God, smoked garlic really is the one, isn't it? David loves garlic so much. He eats so much of it. So much so that sometimes I'm woken in the night because David has flipped over and he's just breathing garlic over me. Oh, this one's got a bit like black around the edges as well. And here we go, right, okay. I'm gonna put that in there. God, that is nice. I wish there was something you could do with garlic skins. Oh, apart from just eating. You can't even put them on compost, can you? Well, unless my mum and dad were lying to me. They told me you can't put onions or garlic and yeah, on compost. Okay, give that a little stir. Oh, I popped them. Oh, there's gonna be quite a few poppy boys in here. Shall I blitz it? I'm gonna wait for this to cook. Do you know what? I'm gonna wait for that to cool down a bit. I'm gonna prep this. I think I'm gonna do the whole lot of this because I want it to be basil -y. And like I said, I'm not mad on the flavor, but I'm hoping it will be overpowered. So that's gonna go in the 
well, let's see if anything happens with this. Does anyone know if anything will happen with this now I've obliterated it? I saw on Salted Food, which I watch God, it's so aniseedy now. On Sil Salted Food, which is a YouTube channel I watch, they had like a hydroponics herb grower, which is supposed to be really good. Um, it was 20 quid and it's, I mean, it's a good idea. It's an old wine bottle that they turned upside down and um, had made like a hydroponics thing in there. So let's see, right, okay. I can go back in, I'm gonna boil the kettle. Come over here now, over there, that's fine. I'm gonna boil the kettle, although you won't really wanna hear the sound of the kettle being boiled, will you? No, you won't. So it might still be a bit hot. Annoyingly, I've made up 500 ml of stock and I don't think it needs stock. I think it's wet enough as it is. Oh, it's really nice. It's really nice. Oh yeah, I love a, good, I love a bowl of that. I'd probably put it in a bowl rather than heating it out of there. Oh yeah. Oh, that's gorgeous. Well, it looks delicious. I'll bring my glass of water out. And I already know it takes, oh, look, let me show you it with the basil on top just for the effect. Doesn't it look lovely? Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna do a little bit more reading. I'm almost finished editing that video, which I'll finish once I've done a bit more reading. 86 pages I've read of this so far today. Well done, mate. Eating soup though. I'm gonna go and put a bib on. I'm gonna put a bib on. Know your limitations, I think. And my limitations are that I could well spill soup on myself whilst eating it and not fully concentrating. So, here we go. So yummy. And I've got like two more portions. So I'll probably have one tomorrow. Maybe even take some to work next week. I can freeze it. <laughs> Big bit of garlic. Oh. I think David would even like this. He doesn't like soup. Stop reading, Norm. That soup really was delicious. But now the washing's done. So I'm going to put that out. I've edited my video. It's currently uploading. I've responded to my emails. One more I've got to respond to, so I'll do that in a minute once I finish putting this washing out. David's on his way home from work. It's a delicious pasta dinner for dinner. Cinema tonight. It's raining again. I couldn't be happier. I couldn't be happier. So I suppose I'll just crack on with this. I've read over a hundred pages of my book which is great news. I might get a little bit more of it read before Dave gets in. I've got such a garlic in my mouth because of all the garlic. Yeah. I'll carry on doing this, I suppose. I'm gonna start making dinner about four o'clock because we want to have, oh, four o'clock might be a bit early, actually. I've got a feeling the film's at like 10 past six, which is super early, but um, yeah. He might be home by four, so I'll wait. Oh, little sock. Put that on the radiator that's not on. Still, even when the radiator's not on, I still put the underwear on there. Just doesn't make sense, does it? I think I'm also gonna use these days as an opportunity to, um, to catch up on some book too. Find I have less and less time these days to, um, to watch as much YouTube as I used to. I don't have to. Here we go, have a little insight into the answer for the question at the end of it. I tend to um, 
opt to listen to audiobooks when I'm doing stuff instead of watching stuff. So I thought, and I've got 47 videos on my watch later at the moment. And whilst I'm doing this, you may have seen me unpacking things. I'm going to, it's my, it's my niece's birthday. Oh my God, I really want to eat one of these. Um, and I've been tasked with wrapping up the parcel parcel. This is the main prize in the middle. How cute is that? Colour your own everyday bag. And what what day isn't complete every day without this lovely little <laughs> cute <laughs> dinosaur with an eruptive volcano in the back. That's very cute. And then also amongst there's going to be some scented dough. My sister has bought all of these things. I did not. I've been told to put in one pot of scented dough. I'm interested to smell the scented dough. Let's see what they actually do smell like. So, does it tell you what scents they are? I mean, that I think is I'm going there. Nope, doesn't tell you. Smells so good, it says, but doesn't tell you what scent. Judging by that, I would think this is lime. Let's give it a go. <laughs> it's <most> disgusting. <laughs> I don't know what it smells like. That smells a bit like my cat. <laughs> <laughs> don't know what flavour that is. Oh, now that is nice. I don't know what that is. God, that's making me old glands go. It might be blueberry. This one's got to be strawberry, surely. I think it is strawberry, but I think it's sort of like generic sweet vibe. And then this one. Oh, this. Oh, okay. It's got little things. Oh, so that's apple. That one that's not rank is apple. That is strawberry. This is watermelon, which I don't know I would have picked out, but this is blueberry. Blueberry's my favourite. Oh God, that really does make my things go. So I've got to wrap this in the middle. She's given me wrapping paper. So I've got to do one in each different um, wrap. So I've got a stripy one. And this is very, very into dinosaurs and a dinosaur one. And then I think she said the other layers, oh God, she's at a wedding today, so I can't even check with her. I hope it's all right. I think she said the other layers have a Freddo and a stripe in between. Yeah. We'll just go for it. Hopefully I won't muck it up because <laughs> I'll have crying children on my hands come party time. Get all of these out, Centos. Oh God, I really can't remember. I really didn't listen properly when she was telling me. I was like, oh yeah, that'll be fine. Oh, at the very least, I'll wrap up this middle one. I can't remember how many people are going. But if there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, I'm gonna message her, and if she gets back to me, it's good. If not, we'll just hope for the best. Wish me luck. Right, we're going in with reading the book along list by Jane Campbell. That's 57 minutes, that'll keep me going. Um, and that was published, see, I'm, I'm a, a month behind, because that's from the 8th of August. Anyway, right. I'll start with some, this. Also, these scissors are repapering scissors, which I bought when I moved into my first flat with my friend's knee, and we've decorated. And then I used to use them to cut my fringe when I was drunk, getting ready for a night out. Can you imagine? I can't remember what time David told me to start dinner. I've got a feeling the cinema's on at 10 past six tonight, so I should probably start it now. It only takes 14 minutes. Feels a bit much, doesn't it? Maybe I'll just get everything ready. I've got everything out. You're making the pasta out of fresh lasagna. I should show you what I'm making out of actually. So this is Jamie Oliver's new book, One, Simple One Pan Wonders, where it claims you only need to wash up the pan. Well, that's not gonna be true, Jamie, because I've got to chop up the stuff that's going in the pan. Um, but yeah, we've had a little look for it. One of the things we did make that was very nice was like a flatbread in, in the pan and then folded it over. Oh, here they are. Speedy folded flatbreads. And then they look like that when they're done. And I had, cheese in mine, different types of cheese. Oh, and mushrooms. Oh, I love mushrooms. 
David had ham in his, but they've got some mixtures here. Cheese and ham being one of them. Tuna and bean, pepper and ricotta. But basically, you could put any old shit in there, but it was nice. So yeah, we're having this tonight, squash and chickpea pasta. Here it is. I will just show you the Christmas recipe, because I am excited about this. Look, I never even thought of doing this. So that's, look at the Christmas pasta, which is Christmas pasta. Pigs out of blankets, sage and onion, 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 onion chestnut and nutmeg. I'm definitely gonna make it, but what they do is because it's much quicker to cook pasta that I just saw David drive by now, so I will start. Um, it's much quicker to cook lasagna sheet pasta. And then what he's done there is just chopped out stars of it, which I just think is adorable. So you need, and also another good thing about this book is that a lot of the stuff is done to serve one and then you just scale it up. Because I quite like still eating nice food when it's just me. <laughs> I don't know if anyone else feels like that. But quite often I feel like, like no one ever quite caters for a one one res one person recipe. But yeah. Lasagna sheets. Garlic. More garlic. Butternut squash. Red Leicester cheese. Cinnamon. Chilli. I'm not putting chilli in it. Rosemary. And tin of chickpeas. So I better, better get going. The first thing to do is to boil the kettle. Oh, I'm going to... I've planned this so well because David's just coming home now. I can put Jen back on. Do you just want to come and say a quick hello to the vlog, David, before you get back on with some worky work? It's just there. All right. How's your day been, David? Tell all the boys and girls. Um, we've got some new filming equipment at work for the first time in years. Some 4K cameras. And um, we were setting them up and playing with them because we were supposed to be going to an event today, but sadly, because of Queen passing, RIP, the event passing. has been cancelled, which is um, sad, but, you know, it is what it is, it's understandable. Um, yeah, but the the cameras, guys. Where? Guys, you think you're watching something nice on this camera now? Oh my. David tells me that those cameras mm. are better. I was saying to my colleague, when I just had to go, I wish I could go back and film everything I've ever done <laughs> for cancer research because it would just look ten times better now that we've got 4K cameras. If anybody is camera proficient. camera proficient, yeah, that's the word. It's a black magic 4K camera. Now, ideally, we did want the 6K camera, <laughs> but it was sold out, and we bought these back in middle of early August, middle of August, and even now they're still not in stock. So. I've got to put this on now, so say goodbye. Bye. Delishy bummo. <laughs> yeah, David saying delishy bummo. Oh, sorry, Jen, I've done you a terrible mischief there. There we go, look, that's lovely. Um, I'm just watching Jen's vlog and uh, reading vlog of the Book of Prize list, and her reading vlogs are so amazing, and her cooking videos are so much better. Also, I make so much mess when I'm cooking. But here's the pasta. So I've been inspired to actually show you it as I'm cooking it. Here's the pasta. I've put far too much water in, and I was hoping some of it would cook off, but I am now getting to the point where the pasta's gonna be overcooked, so I'm gonna have to drain some of this off. I still hope it tastes nice. I'm sure it will. Um, and then I'm gonna add some cheese to it, and then we're gonna eat. And then what are we gonna watch, David? House of Games. House of Games. I think we've only got one to watch, though, because I don't think yesterday's would have gone on there. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, no, I'm mm, yum, 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 yum. Pasta for my pasta boy. Oh. Thank you. How are you going to eat it if you've got that? Are you going to eat that first? Yeah. <laughs> Shall I put it over here? Yeah. Until the baby's decided to it go. Looks There's David. Quite, it looks delicious, but it looks a bit hot, doesn't yes. it, Monty? Oh, you're so cute. Mm -hmm. Wave, both of you. Mini wave. Wave, Mini. You're pretty. Oh, lordy. The pasta was a... Oh, sorry, Mini, I'm on your tail. There we go, you can have that back. The pasta was an absolute success. David loved it. Um, he's just finishing off some work and we're going to the cinema. <laughs> my head on my reading lamp. Um, yeah, we're going to the cinema tonight. So I thought I'd wrap this up now, um, seeing as it's, well, it's 20 past five and the film starts in less than an hour. Um, so yeah, so let's wrap it up now by talking about the answer to the question. The question was, do you ever listen to audiobooks? Why or why not? So the answer to that question for me is, yes, I listen to audiobooks. I would say, um, about a third of my reading every month and therefore in a year is audiobooks um, and why I listen to audiobooks I think mainly because it sort of serves to me a time when I could be reading which would be otherwise sort of 
dead non-reading time so um, I listen to audiobooks on the way home from um, work um, and I listen to audiobooks if I'm doing a sort of task that involves my hands so it might be chores or like basically any task that doesn't involve me being able to sit down and read that is solo I will be listening to an audiobook so for example walking today to the post office listening to an audiobook when I do my chores listen to an audiobook doing some cooking listening to an audiobook so for me, it's just another way of consuming reading um, without holding the book. And I think it's really great. And I've really, really enjoyed many, many audiobooks. And some of my favourite books have been audiobooks. Um, and I've then gone on and read the physical book because I've enjoyed it so much. Um, I also think I like to... There's particular books that I do like to listen to. So I guess this still falls under the why. Um, in that if it's a, an autobiography and the author is... Uh, narrating it quite often I think oh I'll listen to that on audiobook because I think it's much better performed and I feel like I get something extra out of it so yeah that's the answer to the question for me would love to hear your answers to the question below do you ever listen to audiobooks why or why not there'll be another question of those uh, another one of these questions at the beginning and end of each video that I do these vlog videos I hope that's gone quite well I think we'll get used to it as time goes by um the the sort of like routine of it and stuff like that and then I just wanted to end on a poem <laughs> so um I've got two of these books a poem for every autumn day I've also got a poem for every winter day and I am planning on getting spring and summer when we get round there but I thought it would be nice just to sort of like read a poem just as a like like a, a an end in an ending thought um so i haven't looked at the poem so with this these are lovely lovely books like these are just so sweet and this one in particular really reminds me of the first lockdown because david and i got it in the first lockdown and when we finished working from home in order to sort of like finish you know like when you were working from home and then you just stayed at home and like that was it in order to differentiate the time of like work being over and now it's the evening we would take it in turns to read one of the poems aloud um so yeah but i really enjoyed doing that and i didn't do it last year and i want to get back in the habit of it so i thought on this would be a lovely thing to do to read aloud the poem so we'll look for the poems for the as i said it's the 9th of september there'll be two options so the first one is Take a Poem by James Carter, which I'm not familiar with. And the other one is The Hurt Boy and the Birds. Oh, what do I want? I think I'm going to go for Take a Poem. I think I'm going to go for Take a Poem. I can't really tell you why. Maybe because I think Hurt Boy sounds a bit sad. But we'll go for Take a Poem and let's see what happens. So this is Take a Poem by James Carter. Why not take a poem wherever you go? Pop it in your pocket. Nobody will know. Take it to your classroom, stick it on the wall, tell them all about it, read it in the hall. Take it to the bathroom, tuck it up in bed, take the time to learn it, keep it in your head. Take it for a day trip, take it on a train, fold it as a hat when it starts to rain. Take it to a river, fold it as a boat, pop it in the water, hope that it will float. Take it to a hilltop, fold it as a plane, throw it up skywards time and time again. Take it to a post box, send it anywhere, out into the world with tender, loving care thanks so much guys i'll see you all again soon for another booktube video and i'll see you again hopefully next week this time for another reading vlog bye I feel like a children's tv presenter finishing on a poem bye <laughs>